Well, children, today is the saint that is probably one of the most popular saints of our time. In fact, St. Pius X, his statue is right here by the, by the pulpit. He said of St. Therese that she is the greatest saint of modern times. And I think part of the reason that she is so popular is from her promise. She said that when I go to heaven, I promise to send a shower of roses. And if you look over there at the big statue of St. Therese, she's got lots of roses at her feet, but then she's got some from her hands, a symbol of her, her letting down a shower of roses, meaning many answered prayers. And if you look, it's really hard to see, but if you look on the altar just above the tabernacle, to the right there, you'll see about five or six golden roses. They look like they're all wilted and dry. Well, that's because they are. But I put them there because that is an answered prayer. I remember years ago, Bishop Dolan praying to St. Therese for a very, very important issue, and he received those roses. And they were roses about, uh, that showed that she heard his prayer, and those prayers were for his priests. And so he kept them, and we've kept them ever since. But many people actually do, children, when they pray to St. Therese for a certain favor, they also ask her, send me a rose as a sign that you have heard my prayers. And if you ask, many people who have prayed to St. Therese, they have received roses unexpectedly as a sign that she heard their prayer. Well, other people like her, they like her very much because she is a kind of a down-to-earth saint. If you've, one day I hope that you'll read her book, she always talks about how weak she was and all of her imperfections and the things that got on her nerves, like when she would do laundry with another sister and the other sister was splashing her with dirty water. And who wants to be splashed with dirty water from laundry anyway? But she said it really got on her nerves. Or the times that she would actually fall asleep during her morning prayers in the convent. Or the time that... Um, she actually, all the time, she found the rosary very hard to pray. That's a good lesson for us because the saints were people just like us. Then she talked about the time, now imagine this, if there was some old person behind you, really old. So this nun, when she was in prayer in the morning, there was an, an older nun who sat right behind her who had dentures, that's false teeth, only in those days they were made out of wood and they easily fell out. So the old nun would sit there during the prayer clacking her wooden teeth the whole time of prayer. And another nun would rattle her beads against the pew the whole time of prayer. And it bothered her so much that she almost couldn't take it. She was just about to lose it sometimes and get very impatient, so much so she had to fight her impatience and her anger so much that she says that she broke out into a very bad sweat during that time. That's when she learned that sometimes you have to just undergo something like she, that's when she brought up the horse idea, that some people, well, they try to walk around the horse, which is an obstacle in their path, but St. Therese on this one occasion, she decided, well, I'm small, I'll just walk under the horse. And she, that was her lesson to us. She said, sometimes you don't violently try to push away these, these sounds that bother you, you undergo them. And so she started listening to them purposely. And she said, soon they became like a choir of angels singing to her and they never bothered her again. But one of the things I want to mention today, since it's the month of the angels, is how devoted she was to the angels. At her first Holy Communion, she became a member of what's called the Association of the Holy Angels, and they promise a special devotion to their guardian angels and to pray often to Mary, Queen of the Angels. 
One day she said to her little sister, Celine, about her angel, Jesus has placed very near you an angel from heaven who is always looking after you. He carries you in his hands, lest your foot strike a stone. You don't see him, and yet he is the one who has preserved your soul. He is the one who removes you from all the occasions of sin, and your guardian angel is covering you with his wing. And St. Therese came up with this beautiful prayer, a short one, to her guardian angel. Maybe we'll write that out for all of you children, and you can keep it in your prayer books. My holy guardian angel, cover me with your wings. With your fire, light the road that I'm taking. Come direct my steps. Help me. I call on you just for today. So that's the lesson I'm going to leave you with, children. Remember always, you do have an angel at your side, even at this very moment, watching over you, again, praying with you and for you, and he sees everything. Talk to him often and never offend him by doing bad things in front of him. One saint said this, a priest, a, a bishop, one said to another parishioner, don't ever do anything in front of your angel that you would not do in front of me. That's a good lesson. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.